You're listening to the Music Tech Teacher Podcast, episode number 23. Welcome to the Music Tech Teacher Podcast. Music tech tips, lesson ideas, advice, news and interviews, especially for music teachers. Brought to you by midnightmusic.com.au. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Music Tech Teacher podcast. I'm your host Katie Wardrobe from midnightmusic.com.au, the place for music teachers to get the help they need using technology in music education. If you'd like music tech lesson plans and online courses plus personalised support, I have a special offer for podcast listeners to join my online community. You can find that at midnightmusic.com.au forward slash podcast offer. My guest today is middle school teacher Josh Emanuel from New York, who has been running some engaging music and coding classes with his grade six students. Josh uses Scratch software, which is free, and also the Makey Makey Invention Kit. Now, even if you're a total beginner when it comes to music and coding, I think you'll get a lot out of this episode. Josh and I mentioned quite a few resources and links, and you'll be able to find those in the show notes for this episode at midnightmusic.com.au forward slash 23. I hope you enjoy my chat with Josh. Today's guest is Josh Emanuel. Josh is a music educator, a percussionist, composer and a music technology specialist. He has a master's degree in music technology and also a bachelor's in music education where his major performance instrument was percussion. Josh is currently teaching middle school general music in Nanuet, New York, and he loves to go skiing when there's enough snow. Welcome, Josh. (laughs) Thank you, Katie. I'm happy to be here. It's excellent to talk to you. So where do you go skiing when there is snow? Uh yeah, we, uh, my dad and I like to go up in the Northeast U.S., Vermont, upstate New York. Uh, last year, we got out to Colorado, uh, but this past winter, there wasn't enough snow to really go anywhere. Yeah, I was going to ask, because yeah. here in Australia, that that's very much the case. We have a ski season of about, you know, two weeks or so. Not really, <laughs> not really I'm kidding, but it's very small window, and it's basically dependent on is there enough snow this year or not. And some years there's just a terrible snow season. I don't know how the businesses survive, you know, when it's a bad one, but but sometimes it's yeah. really great. I think last year was a good one. So I don't do a lot of skiing. I was more into rollerblading, <laughs> which is okay. not the same, but sort of similar. And until I got injured just recently, and I've decided I can't rollerblade anymore. So. <laughs> Oh no. Yeah, I know. It was, uh, I was talking about my injury. I fell in a seated position and um, fractured my, uh, the bottom part of my (laughs) spine. Yeah, it's not very good. And uh, yeah, but when I've been telling people about that, a lot of them talk about snowboarding and how that injury is really common in snowboarding accidents too, because the same sort of thing. You're just falling over all the time on your backside. (laughs) (laughs) Not so good. Anyway, so I, I wanted to get you on the show because I'm currently currently putting together this, you know, workshop about music and coding and doing some training materials for my online community around the topic. And, you know, we we chatted on Facebook and I know you're doing some programming with your grade six students around Scratch and using the Makey Makey Invention Kit. So I'm really keen to hear about, you know, more about what you're doing. And and for those listening, if you're not sure what any of that is, it's okay. We'll, we'll talk it all through and explain everything. But it's a really great area where you know, students can be really engaged by um, combining this coding stuff with with music, essentially. So so why did you get started with coding with your students? What was the thing that started you off in that area? Yeah, it it all started um, before I was teaching in Nanuet. I taught for a year covering a sabbatical um, at uh, where I did my undergrad in SUNY Potsdam at the Crane School of Music. And while I was there, I was able to audit a class that one of my colleagues was teaching on computer music programming. Oh, cool. And we did a lot of stuff with um, RTC Mix and Pure Data and Max, which I had uh, played around with a little bit in grad school. And when I got to Nanuet, I just started showing some of my stuff to my kids uh, just to kind of show them some of the other things that are out there besides just um, band, orchestra, chorus, guitar, garage band, all the things that they already knew about just to kind of open their experience with what you can do and how other ways to make music. Um, and then the summer after my first year, I was at a conference at, uh, New York university at NYU 
And uh, Eric Rosenbaum, one of the creators of Makey Makey and uh, who was involved in the creation of Scratch from MIT, was at the conference talking about it. And I said, this is exactly what I need. Yeah, you are so lucky to have met him and to be at yeah. NYU. I, I, they do this conference every year, don't they? I think around August they do. or so. Yeah, and, and I, yeah. Oh, I looked. You know, I was thinking, oh, can I do that? Can I make it there somehow? Because I, I really <laughs> want to go and spend some time with them and chat to them because they're doing some fantastic, innovative stuff there, and um, you know, pretty much all the cool stuff that's coming out. I don't know. It's often coming from them at at, at NYU. So, yeah. Wow. I'm, I'm really lucky. excited. I'm. I'm starting Starting my doctorate with them in oh, the fall. Oh no way! So I'm so jealous. That yeah, <laughs> that's great. That's really cool. Yeah, I'm, I might try and get there next year somehow. Maybe not to that conference, but just to I might just go and hang around there for a few days and just you know, park myself in there in their building. <laughs> well, you'll have to let me know. I'll have access by then. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, cool. Okay, that's great. Even better. <laughs> Oh, that's fabulous. So, um, so uh, what did what did you see Eric do in that that session? He was he showing examples of you know incorporating it with yeah. music education because is the conference was the conference for music educators primarily? Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's called the Impact Conference. That's um, right. Interactive music or multimedia, something along the lines of multimedia and performance art and technology. Yes. Um, yes. I don't remember exactly what he was doing, but he was showing a scratch and makey makeys and. Um, Somebody else was there with little bits. Yeah, which is um, another little synthesizer building kit, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah. just briefly, we'll talk more about Scratch and Makey Makey and explain to everyone what they are. But Scratch is the software essentially that that runs the the actions, you know, to, to make something happen. And so that's the coding part. And then the Makey Makey Invention Kit allows you to um, use external things to control what's going on in Scratch. Is that sort of a vague, <laughs> vaguely correct? Yeah, so, yeah. Um, yeah. The, the, the makey makey kind of tricks your computer into thinking you have an external typing keyboard. That's right. Yeah, and and you can use it with anything. It doesn't have to be with Scratch. So tell them some um, examples so, of things because there's some uh, well-known yeah. examples. When you go to the Makey Makey website, it's quite funny. They use funny things uh, as your yeah. You know, one, of the, one of the best known. <laughs> One of the best known examples is uh, the banana piano. Yeah. Where they they wire up a bunch of pianos to the computer, and each one can be uh, playing a different note. Yeah. Uh, there are tons of videos on YouTube of different musical examples. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it's is it Eric that's done a compilation, or some one of the others yeah. maybe has done a comp two compilations of, and I'll link to those in the show notes. They're fantastic examples of using the makey makey in musical ways. So, like one of the, I think the first video starts off with a girl playing a series. She's playing a series of flowers that yes. are in vases along a desk. You know, it looks amazing. So she just touches each flower, and each one gives off a different pitch, and it looks beautiful. I mean, it's beautiful. And there's some other fantastic ones. There are some with uh, the conductive paint and conductive ink, which are beautiful to look at yes. and also sound really cool. Yes, yes. And I would love to get my hands on some of that conductive paint in my school, but... Yeah, well, I actually saw some... Slow, uh, but sure. <laughs> Yeah. I was mentioning to Josh that I've just ordered my Makey Makey kit, which should arrive today, hopefully. And uh, on the website where I bought mine, um, an Australian distributor, they actually were selling the conductive ink. And I was like, oh, should I get that now? I probably uh, should have, <laughs> shouldn't I? Anyway, Maybe. I'll, there's many other options for it. I've been using a lot of aluminum foil and Play-Doh. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to have to go and up my supplies of those, I think, too, <laughs> which will be this fun. This was the first year I had to put Play-Doh on a purchase order, which was kind of fun, but... <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. So let's we'll step back and we'll we'll go through a little bit more detail about how the everything sure. works. But um, but first of all, I mean, I think this is a question that comes up a bit. What what would you say to someone who asks, you know, why why should we do coding with students in music classes anyway? I mean, you know, they've got all these other great things they're doing, performance wise or composition or you know literacy stuff. And so, what what does the coding do? That's you know, what's its special superpower? <laughs> yeah, well, I th I think the first key and I know this has been mentioned in some of your other podcast episodes is that this is not to replace anything else that's been going on. Yeah. This, this isn't meant to replace band orchestra chorus or any of the traditional classical music education that happens. This is just another, another outlet. Um, and I think that students should have as many tools as possible to create music that we can give them. Yeah, I like that too. Yeah, I really and, like that theory. Uh, and, and I think the computer's a musical instrument and coding is one way to play it. 
Yeah, and more and more so these days. I mean, uh, you see many more videos popping up on, say, YouTube of people playing things that you wouldn't have expected to be instruments. For instance, the iPad, you know, has become an instrument in its own right, you know, for with all the things you can do there. And I agree, it's great to have that, that big range of opportunities. And it, it probably speaks to some students who think in a particular way, you know, more so Absolutely. than others. So, yeah, it opens it up there. I, I was looking up, preparing for our conversation, I went back onto code.org to look up some stats because I always go there before I talk about Scratch and Makey Makeys and coding. Um, but in the U.S., uh, what did they say? 71% of new jobs in uh, STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math fields are in computing, but only 8% of STEM graduates are computer science majors. Yeah, right. That's so interesting. Wow. And after the arts, uh, computer science and engineering are the subjects that students enjoy the most. Wow, that's so fascinating. Because in my head, it's always been a very dry sort of subject. And, you know, when someone says the word coding to me, I picture, you know, um, basically a dark screen, like a black screen with a lot of writing on it, which does not make sense, you know. And and that's kind of, I think, a lot of people's uh, thought process when it comes to coding, that's what you picture in your head. But Right, and your stereotypical picture yeah. of someone who sits behind that desk. In a dark and room and yeah. you know, hasn't been out for four days. Yeah, <laughs> and <laughs> I do know people like that, but, <laughs> but, you know, it doesn't have to be like that. And when you see videos like the Makey Makey, you know, in action and people using Scratch and stuff, you know, it's it's quite different and it's innovative and it's exciting and engaging and fun. So, oh, what, yeah. tell us about the types of coding um, programming projects you've done with your students so far and and you've been doing this mostly with grade six is that right yes yeah grade six um my my classes meet every day for a quarter of the year so over the course of the school year i see everybody in the sixth grade but only for about 10 weeks yeah yeah um so this usually happens around week seven depending on how the quarter is going and um we use scratch to create virtual instruments that are interactive so in scratch you can program something where you just press a button and it goes through a whole process like playing a whole song or make it playing a movie. But I require it to be something where you have to be actively engaging with the instrument that they make. Yeah, um, right. Okay. So, okay. So how, in what way does that work? So the kids mm-hmm. start off, I mean, when you open up Scratch, there's, um, there's sort of basically two areas of the screen. One is the list of instructions for the thing, and the other part of it is the thing. <laughs> and so, and I think they call it the sprite, don't they? So basically, the sprite could be a character, or it could be a piano keyboard, or it could be a um, on the screen that is a picture of a piano keyboard on the screen, or or a shape, or something else. Right. And so then, um, so they go in there. And so what, what sort of things are they creating? It, it, do you say to them a specific instrument that they need to create, like a drum kit or a keyboard or do they get I, I always start with uh, the very first thing I do is demo how to make a sound. And when you open up Scratch, you see uh, the sprite, the character of their little cat mascot. Yep. It's this cute little cat. And we go through very quickly how to have it meow because some of the sprites, some of the characters, some of the pictures have sounds that are preloaded and attached to them. So the cat has a meow sound attached to it. And in two steps, you can make it meow. Excellent. Um, the way the way that Scratch is set up, instead of typing out lines of code, like we were talking about earlier, you have these little blocks that contain different pieces of code that you can adjust and change and reorder and each little one of those blocks is, um, it's basically like an, an instruction. So it might say, uh, you know, move forward or move back or something like that. That's right, right. isn't it? So, so you're sort of putting together, you know, in, in order those steps, what, whatever it is you want them to do. And yeah, that then, then the character will actually carry out the steps once you set that in motion. Also. Exactly. Yeah. And it looks, I mean, when you, we talked about this, you know, dark screen with light, you know, text all over yeah. it looking, and which sounds really dry and boring. And Scratch is nothing like that. It's quite brightly no. colored. It's a light interface. And um, the colored blocks of code are kind of like, like purple and yellow or blue and yellow or something like that. Aren't yeah. They? they have all sorts of different colors yeah. depend, and they're color coded based on what they're doing. So yeah, all right. of the, uh, all the triggers, so like all the ones that start the code, like a mouse click or a keep stroke, those are all one color. All the movement is another color. All the sound is a different color. 
Yeah, right. Excellent. So Scratch has some pre-loaded sounds in it, which are basically short wave files, are they, or MP3 files or something? Yeah, and they do also have MIDI instruments in there as well. Yeah, right. And so, but then you can obviously um, create your own wave files, which you would upload. So, uh, in theory, I guess you could make the cat say hello in your own voice if you recorded yep. hello and then uploaded that. You can actually record directly into it. Oh, okay. Oh, excellent. So, so you, you can cut that step out if you have. Uh, and like an mp3 file or something that you want to use you can upload that as well but if you want to just record yourself speaking or playing something you can just record directly into it oh that's really good cool excellent oh that's great and so um so the, so you get them to make the cat meow and then after that what do they what do they head off on after that yeah, th- then i'll usually show them how to make a drum set oh cool yep Pretty simply, and we map each drum uh bass drum snare drum hi-hat and crash cymbals and we'll map each different instrument to the different arrow keys on the keyboard. So then it's something that they can play and they can improvise with. And um, I'll also show them um, a piano keyboard that I made where each key is programmed to a different key on the keyboard, typing keyboard. And from there, I just let them go. Um, They can either recreate an instrument. I've had some kids make um, a bass, violin, drums, piano, ukulele, guitar, I had a kid, uh, I had a girl make her own version of uh, a launch pad. Oh, really? So she had, she had this grid and each, each square on the grid triggered a different sounds. Um, and then other kid, other students just kind of make whatever they want to make. Um, I, I very open to what constitutes a musical instrument. And the, um, the, the image of the instrument or the picture, so in the, let's use the drum kit as an example, uh, are they using images which are already in the Scratch, you know, sort of library or collection, or are they creating their own images? Because I think you can do that too, can't you? Both, yeah. And, and you can also, sometimes they'll find a picture on Google and they'll save that image and upload that as their, their sprite or... Um, Depending on what they're doing, they might take a picture of themselves. You can do, you can use their uh, built-in camera to create a sprite. Yeah, I have some students that use the built-in stuff. I have some that draw their own. It, it's a very wide-open project, which I like. I think that's good because then they can go down their own path of interest and and that sort of thing. And yeah. what do they do after that? Do you do other projects after that? So, or is that the main thing? I mean, you haven't got much time. I was, well, you've got like three weeks left of your program. Do you spend most of that last bit on on the coding stuff? It's um, about a week on Scratch, and then another two weeks on Makey Makey. So in Scratch, after they've done that initial one, do do you get them to do something else before moving on to the Makey Makey? It depends on how quickly they finish. Um, Sometimes I'll have them make another one or kind of expand on what they've done or uh, come up with a composition. Yeah, right. using, Using the instrument that they've created because the goal is to make something that they can perform with or compose with. You mentioned that you require them to have an involvement level, like a, um, what's the right word for it? It's early here and my brain's not quite. Yeah, like, it's interactive. <laughs> interactive, thank you. Interactive. I knew there was a better word. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so when when they're using the instrument they've made, um, yeah, so basically they will press the arrow keys on their keyboard to trigger the sounds live so they could play a drum pattern by pressing them in time or something like that. Yep. Okay, good. I'm just getting it straight in my mind. <laughs> That's yeah. great. That's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I also have them um, write out the instructions on how to play it. Yeah. Um, because oh, if, you, if you're looking at the, the Scratch project, each sprite, the scripts, the code for each sprite, you can't see all of them at once. You have to go from one to the next. Right. Um, because each set of code is attached to one character. So yes. I have them type up simply just like to play the drum, to play the snare drum, press this key and so forth. And the alternative, um, I presume you could also ask Scratch to play the whole drum pattern itself by um, mm-hmm. by programming the steps in sequence rather yes. than you doing it manually. Yeah, that's great. So that's another good option and a, I guess another assignment in itself in a way. Yeah. I did have a student program Mary Had a Little Lamb. Yeah, and right. Figure- have scratch play it the whole thing yeah cool and do the kids love it are they all really into it most of them most of them they they also use scratch in their technology class which is another quarter long course so they use scratch there and but they do more animation and movies and things like that and drawing but they don't do a whole lot with audio so this kind of takes that other side of it and lets them expand on what they've done earlier in the year yeah because i can imagine there would be a lot of cross-curricular type possibilities, um, which would be really good. I know 
I know that <laughs> the teachers I speak to quite often, if you can tick a box, you know, that's a cross curricular thing, like you can, if you can tick the math box or the, you know, um, literacy Absolutely. or whatever, it's always a big bonus. And, and I know here in Australia, I mean, coding generally is a, a much bigger part of the curriculum than it was in the past. It's, it, it's kind of needs to be woven in across, you know, um, the subject areas and, so I'm, I'm thinking this is a great way to get into it. And this ticks a lot of cross-curricular boxes, you know, once you're involving the music and the computer science side of things. And then, you know, depending on what project you do, you could also tick some boxes there as well. So Absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of, my mind's in that, that phase of, yeah, I can see lots of possibilities and I'm just going to try and work out what they all are. You know, I'm not quite there with what, I love the idea of making an instrument. I think that's a great, a great starting point, you know, sort of a, a nice straightforward thing. Um, but yeah. Tell us about the, how the Makey Makey gets involved and just uh, maybe start with conceptually, like how does that fit in with Scratch? Because it's, you know, two separate things, but they're going to work together to make, to make the music essentially. Right. So, so the Makey Makey kind of works as a way for you to physically interact with this virtual instrument that you've created. Um, on the Makey Makey, there are ways to plug into um, the up, down, left, right, space bar, W, A, S, D, F, and G keys, as well as your mouse click. And so instead of the students pressing the arrow keys, they're going to press something which is connected to the Makey Makey to, right. to play the keyboard or the, the drum kit that they've made in scratch. Yeah. And that's where it gets really cool. So the bananas that we talked about. Which yeah, makes me laugh the is, yeah. The very stereotypical kind of um, <laughs> thing that people show in workshops. And it's funny. I mean, you, you know, I've rocked up to workshops where the presenter's at the front of the room and there's basically a table and a row of fruit, like variety of fruit, <laughs> you know, um, which has been picked up somewhere. I, I've been doing a series of one day conferences around different places, you know, so we go into state in Australia and we've just gone to New Zealand and come back again. And, and it's all, the same presenters do most of those conferences, a bit of a traveling road show. But Cheryl, uh, one of the other presenters, she does a lot of uh, scratch and makey makey stuff as with her kids at school, but also has been doing workshops as well. So, yeah, so her room is often set up at the front with this row of fruit, you know. <laughs> and I, I forgot to ask her, I'm sure she has to, because when we travel into state, you can't take fruit, you know, between the different states of a Australia in most cases oh. because of quarantine issues you have to throw it out you know they don't want to spread bugs and whatever through the different right. states of Australia so you have to throw out fruit so she can't bring it from home so she must go and raid the hotel you know or room or the, <laughs> the local supermarket or something I must ask her <laughs> so what else have you tried have you tried lots of different things with the makey makey kid um I try the the only materials I've been able to use so far were uh, play doh, aluminum foil, uh, pencil graphite, yep. and I've tried with pipe cleaners that sometimes work, sometimes doesn't. You kind of have to peel some of the fuzz off. Yeah, to get but, to the metal bit or the wire bit. Yep. And tell them about tell everybody about why that is. Why do some things work well and some don't work so well? Yeah, the whole idea is to complete an electrical circuit. So when you're plugging these things into the Makey Makey, it's just one end of the circuit, and then you attach to yourself uh, to the ground of the circuit. And when you touch these things, that completes all those different circuits. And that's what triggers the noise, yeah. And you, you, you need conductive material. Yeah, and so some things work really well. So water, I mean, water on YouTube, I've seen water being used right. as an example, which is amazing. Um, what was one of the other, I mean, I think I mentioned the flowers, you know, this girl flowers, <clears throat> with the flowers yeah. in vases, which looked you amazing. You can use different people. Um, yeah, different people. I think on the website they say, here are some of the things you can use, and it's got like a banana, your grandmother, <laughs> you know, and yeah. a whole list of things. <laughs> Yeah, yeah I, I, I don't use water in my classroom because I I'm too risky. worried about it spilling. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm too worried about <laughs> it spilling onto one of the school laptops. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a really wise move actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, I don't I don't allow fruit either. Oh, really? For yeah, same, for that for that same reason. Yeah, um, just my, food. Depending on the the makeup of the class, I had one class uh, this past quarter. I had thirty students in the class. Wow, and, that is crazy. And to try and I, I barely had enough. I have 10 Makey Makeys and working in groups, I was just able to get 
enough makey makeys for each group. Yeah, so they worked in groups of three or so then for each set. Did yeah. They? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. I was going to ask about that actually, the setup of the equipment and stuff, because to start using Scratch is free. I mean, it, it, there's no, no yes. cost involved. So you, you don't, and you don't need to to use the makey makeys to get Scratch to work. So if, if there are teachers listening that want to give it a go, they can just use the Scratch part on its own and you'll use Absolutely. the computer keyboard to trigger stuff. But, but the makey makeys do add this added bonus cool element you know? yeah this episode of the music tech teacher podcast is brought to you by the midnight music community the midnight music community is an online space for music teachers who'd like help using technology in their music lessons there are online courses video tutorials lesson plans music tech news and professional development certificates are provided for any training that you undertake I'm inside the community every day, personally answering members' questions and sharing tips and ideas. The best thing is that you get to connect with hundreds of other music teachers just like you and share your own experiences and occasional music tech frustrations. For more information and a special joining price just for the listeners of this podcast, visit midnightmusic.com.au forward slash podcast offer. That's midnightmusic.com.au forward slash podcast offer. Yeah, so describe the kit to people. What what do you get in the kit and how many students? I mean, you've just mentioned you would use one kit with, say, three students or so. Right. Um, but if you have more, obviously, it's better. <laughs> Everything yeah, with I technology. Mean, I, I actually probably would still encourage them to work in groups of three or so. Um, to, I, I do have a couple of students that do work really well on their own, but I like the collaborative part of it. I know you talked about collaboration on a previous podcast, and this is just another outlet for that, for collaborative music making. And I think probably there's a big uh, problem solving element in, mm-hmm. especially in using the makey makey, because they've got to work out how to complete that circuit. And so exactly. that would be better done in a group, I would <clears throat> imagine. There, There's a lot of troubleshooting that goes on with the makey makeys. Yeah, right. <laughs> Why is this working? Why is it playing two sounds at once? Yeah. Oh, these wires are all touching each other. That's why it's all happening. Or <laughs> you're not connected to the ground or <laughs> that doesn't conduct electricity or... Yeah, well, yeah, which is great. Awesome stuff to have to think about, really. Absolutely. So tell people what's in the kit. I mean, there's a little, um, like a little board. Is that what you call mm-hmm. it, the board? <laughs> yeah, I guess it's it's kind of like a circuit board, and that's where everything plugs in. And it's got a USB port, and it comes with a USB cable that plugs right into your computer. Um, it comes with a bunch of alligator clips that can clip into the board, and then also to whatever you're attaching to. Um, and then it has some other some other cables that stick into the back that are kind of pins, and that's for uh, some of the other out, some of the other outputs that are on the back of the Makey Makey. Yeah, when I was looking up to get mine, you can basically buy a kit which is all of those things in one kit. It's like a, I think I got a deluxe kit and had a few extra bits and pieces. It had some tape and stuff as well. So. Nice. Um, yeah, I know. I'm hoping. I'm really hoping it arrives today. Uh, yeah, it should be good fun. I'm, I'm looking forward to playing with it. And my my own kids. Um, I've got my eldest is in grade six, so he's at the same age of the oh, kids perfect. you're working with. Yeah, and my younger one is only you know 16 months younger than him. So. They're at this great age, and uh, my youngest, who's also called Josh too, so great name. He's uh, perfect. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's really into science stuff, and I think this is going to be right up his alley. He's a great musician too, but really into science and and things and sort of knowing how things work. So I reckon this is going to be really up his alley. I'm going to make them come up with some projects that I can use in workshops and suggest to other oh, people. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Careful, he might take it away from you. He may do. I may buy him one for Christmas. <laughs> Another one will get a second set, which would be cool. Well, now they, they make it easy to reprogram them so you can change what the different letters and keyboard inputs are. Oh, right. So in what way? What what have they done to make it easier? They, they The newer ones, and I don't have one of the newer ones, unfortunately, but if you go to a one of the Makey Makey websites with the Makey Makey plugged in, it will let you reprogram it. So instead of being limited to the oh. the keys that we talked about, you can reprogram it to any key on your keyboard. Oh, so that that's way cool. you can plug more than one in to the same computer and have all these different things that you can. Oh, that makes so much sense. I didn't know that at all. Excellent. That's really cool. I can just say I'm going to get my one and then instantly I'm going to be ordering the second and third set. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and they're not too expensive. I mean, um, I think... 
you know, US dollars, we'll talk that because it's a bit more global yeah, um, in terms of currency, $50. but about 50, yeah, 50 or 60 bucks or so. In Australia, it's a little bit more. Um, not much more, though. It wasn't sometimes in Australia when we go to buy things, it's another third of the cost on top or, or something like that. But it really wasn't that much different. The The only difference I paid, I think, was just the postage, so the, the shipping delivery fee, which wasn't much. And, yeah, there's a lot of places which are selling those kits. So if you're interested in looking at them, you can either buy them online like I did, but you can go to many of the distributors which sell kind of like education technology stuff, not necessarily a music shop or website but they're more the general ed tech places i I found other ones that are selling them so if any anyone listening is going to a conference which has education technology sessions i can almost guarantee someone there will be you know showing them and also selling them too so (laughs) we're not getting any kickback for mentioning makey makey it's just a really inventive tool and innovative and and just opens up that whole you know the whole area to anyone basically and you know for it to not cost too much money is great when i when i first went to buy it i was thinking oh you know how much when we're going to shelling out here and you know is it a couple of hundred dollars but no less than a hundred always makes me happy so it's a good thing yeah. <laughs> and they even make a smaller one that yeah, fits on I a keychain yes for, and i think like 20 bucks yeah it's like the size of a, a flash drive isn't it yeah and, um it's really tiny i know i almost bought that just to have it to show and anyway I, that'll be my second round of purchasing <laughs> Yeah, and, that looks and I really think they good. have uh, big class sets of like twelve of them. They at do, a yeah, price. yeah. So you can, yeah. So if you want to buy ten at once, there's basically a, a, some kind of discount for doing that rather than buying ten individual sets. And yeah, that looked really good. Not necessarily for me; it wasn't so much right, for yeah. me. But <laughs> but yeah, if if people want to set themselves up with that, I think it's a great a great thing to do and just so different. And so. Um, where to from here? Are you planning on doing more stuff in the future or expanding it to other year levels? Because you work with, you know, middle school, not just grade mm-hmm. six students. Um, are you planning to do more in the future? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm hoping to get some uh, some more musical projects out of this. I had some really interesting ideas that students came up with, but not a lot of them were terribly musical. So I, I did have um, one of the first quarter i think it was the first quarter i had a group that made a uh, a game board like the game twister oh excellent and every and every color was a different sound and it was a lot of fun but and they triggered different sounds but not super musical it had a little bit of john cagey type <laughs> stuff to it but i think a lot of, one of the things i was thinking and it's along those lines really i mean i i end up often doing um quite a bit of You know, stuff around, say, sound effects, whether that ties in with film scoring or video game stuff or uh, storytelling. And I think it would work really well with that. You could make, you could use that twister board as a sound trigger board for sound effects that are part of a story, for instance, and and the kids could record their own. And so for me, it's a great starter project getting kids to record sound effects because it's just short snippets of audio in most cases. Mm -hmm. And it's a great way to get into audio recording without having to record a whole ensemble performance, you know, three minute piece of music and making right. sure mics are set up for that whole thing. And then you get to the end and you find everything went wrong actually yep. in bar three of the piece of music. And then they have to do the whole thing again. But if you're recording yeah. sound effects, that, that shortness of, you know, recording, if, if you mess up a sound effect, it's not such a big deal, you know, and basically right. you can, uh, you know, just, just do it again and without too much heartache. But I did see one of the YouTubes on videos, uh, one of the videos on YouTube, um, one of the related videos, it, it was quite funny. It made me laugh because someone had set up the Makey Makey uh, to basically connected a knife and a carrot to the computer and they oh. hooked up the Wilhelm scream sound. And I I don't know if you know that scream, but it's a, a classic iconic scream. Man. And it's been, um, <laughs> it's been a little bit of an in-joke with sound producers on films and they, they slip this sound effect which is a man screaming and it's the most hilarious man screaming it's a very girly scream i think in my mind and basically <laughs> that gets slipped into a lot of movies as a bit of an in joke and it, it's yeah. quite widely known now so it's not 
much of an in joke anymore. But um, you can hear this scream in heaps of movies. Like I, I just listened to another I know it's podcast. In Star Wars. Yeah, it is. It's in Star Wars and Jurassic Park, and it's all it's everywhere. And and so those people who recognise it would be watching the movie and like, oh, oh they've used the scream, you know. So, so <laughs> someone connected the the knife and the carrot up to the scream. So when you chop the carrot, the the carrot screams. <laughs> Oh, no. It's hilarious. <laughs> I'll link to that video as well. But I, as soon as I saw the title, um, you know, Carrot Screams When Cut or something like that, I thought, I bet they've used the Wilhelm scream. <laughs> and they did. <laughs> oh, so funny. Yeah, I'm, I'm really keen to work out what are some cool things I can do. But, yeah, this, I think the sound effects thing could be really good. I'm, I'm, yeah, I did I have a group yeah. that wrote an original song. I also do ukuleles with my sixth grade for the first half of the quarter. And I had a group of girls that wrote an original song with ukuleles and lyrics, but they also wrote a piano part for Makey Makey Piano. Oh, that's cool. That's so and cool. It was, it was amazing. Wow. Oh, that's even better. See, that that really brings it into that real world situation. That's really and, cool. And that, that, that was like, that's exactly what I want this project oh, yes. to be. You don't and have the any... The way it just wrapped everything up that we had done during the quarter was yeah. beautiful. Yeah. You don't have any video or audio of them doing that, do you, by any chance? I do. I'm not sure if, if I can, you can share, share it. it. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. If you get to the point where you can share it for any reason, even if it's just the Absolutely. audio, it'd be great to yeah, it'd be great to to see it. I'll um I'll try to dig up some examples of student work, whether it's yours or someone else's, but uh, you know, yeah, to put I'll, into I'll the try training. and get some audio of it. I know I have video, but I think if I extract the audio, I think yeah, I'll be all that'd right. be great. Yeah, that would be really great. I know it's hard to share stuff sometimes, but um, there's not massive. I haven't found a lot of examples on YouTube of. Like I've seen the makey makey examples, but you know, kids in action with that sort of thing, like what you said, you know, there's there's a few little videos of kids, you know, having programmed Twinkle Twinkle into Scratch, and um, the the teacher, the one that I looked at the other day, that the teacher hasn't really explained what they're doing. It's just the computer playing Twinkle Twinkle, and for those people who don't know what the kids done, it's kind of like, yeah, okay, so you know, what's the big right. deal? Where right. the kids actually spent a lot of time putting the steps into an order in Scratch and programming the whole thing. So, um, I, I always think those things need a bit of framing before you show them to people, so that people go, oh, right, that's really cool. You know, that kid's done a great job and and has an understanding of it. So, yeah, that yeah. Would, that would be great. And have you taken part in the Hour of Code at all? I've seen it. I haven't taken part in it and I haven't been able to work it into my curriculum. But yeah. the, what the things that they use are very much based on Scratch. Yes, because so the era of code is, you know, basically this sort of it's sort of like a celebration, isn't it, of coding and um, trying to get people into coding in a, a very non-threatening way, I suppose, just by yeah. doing an hour activity with with your students in class. And the era of code have a whole website and a whole there's a there's a specific date. I think it's I think it might be December. Is that right? Uh, I might be wrong. I, I don't about remember. That. Anyway, I'll I'll link again to that that website too. But yeah, they they do this sort of thing, and they've got heaps of activities on the Hour of Code website, um, lesson plans, and in across all subjects. It's not just music stuff. There's there are some music ones too, but um, I think that would be a cool thing to tie it into that somehow as well. Absolutely. Um, if it works for the time of year, it's a December's a, a weird time for us here because it's. It's basically our June, your June. Yeah, it's your, your <laughs> end summer. Of, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're coming up to the end, and a lot of teachers are. I am not tackling anything new at this point in the year. So. <laughs> and we're we're getting ready for our winter vacation and concerts yeah, and that's all right. yeah. craziness. And just... Yeah, that's right. Yeah, because it's your December. Yeah, of course, that's crazy. <laughs> it's been excellent talking to you. I will. Um, I'll look forward to to checking out your stuff a bit more. And and I did notice that on your website, uh, which I'll link to, has um, some slides from one of the presentations you did. I mean, obviously, it need, kind of needs you there to describe it and stuff, but there's some useful yeah. information on there, I think, as well. And so I'll link to that too so people can take a look. But, yeah, it'd be great to find some student examples somewhere. So, yeah, if you manage yeah, to do I'll, that, it'd be great. I'll get that, I'll get that audio to you and we can yeah, link to that. Yeah, cool. That would be excellent. Thanks so much, Josh. I'm really looking forward Thank to you. having a go myself. I may be hitting you up with some questions about makey makey trouble Absolutely. shooting. Absolutely, <laughs> please do. Please do. All right, I will. It'll be next week when I'm in, and we're basically heading into a holiday here just for a couple of weeks. We've got like an end of term holiday for a couple of weeks, so I'm going to visit my dad, who's uh, interstate. He's in, on the Gold.
Gold Coast, a bit warmer than where I am. And and he's a musician, and his wife's a musician, and they they're really into stuff. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna take it if it arrives in time, and uh, we'll we'll do some playing with bananas and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> Gummy worms too apparently work. Oh yes, I did see that. Yes, yeah. There's quite a few cool things that that. Um, Conductive, yeah, you know, paint and whatever looks great. And I, I meant to mention before, using that means that you can basically draw or paint a picture, which you can then play back with your fingers. And that that really yeah. appeals to me. That looks beautiful. And one of the examples on that YouTube video it looks beautiful. It's like a spiral oh, of art. And yeah, you. They must have hooked up so many of the makey makey alligator oh, clips because every note has to be a separate alligator clip, doesn't it? Is that right? Right. And right. th- this picture has so many little components to it. They must have matched up, I don't know, 50, I don't know, something like that. Yeah, yeah. A- at least like two or three different makey makeys. Well, for what, the one picture. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah, it, it just looked beautiful. But yeah, it, it's really great, really innovative. So yeah, you can make artwork that is touchable and will sing to you and things like that. So very cool. So thanks again. And yeah, we'll get this episode up quickly. And I'm really looking forward to getting into it myself. And hopefully some other people listening will also give it a go and explore some some options. I hope so. Thank you. Josh. Good talking to you. Good talking to you, Katie. The Music Tech Teacher podcast is hosted by me, Katie Wardrobe. You can find more information and links from today's episode at midnightmusic.com.au forward slash 23. Thanks for listening and I'll see you next time.